Hello, my lovelies. Ceiling planning. That is, uh, that is, that's today's. Uh, that is this, this, this topic. I feel like saying today is disingenuous because this is the same day as I'm recording the previous episode, but it didn't happen on the same day. I promise. It happened on the next day. This was pretty exciting because it's actually something that you're going to see at the end. It feels like real progress, putting the cladding on the ceiling. Actually, yeah, something definitely, yeah, come on, come on. I don't know what my cladding is. I bought it a while ago. Uh, I just looked at the, the website for the woodyard and I'm guessing it's either redwood or cedar or oak. And I think it's about four or five millimeter thick. I know that it is 90 millimeters across once you've accounted for the the slotting together of it so i figured out that i would need 16 boards to cross the roof of my van the edges are kind of a little bit a little bit of a question mark which is why we decided to start in the middle now the boards that i have are 2.4 meters long so that meant in most places i was going to need to have a join i was going to need to use more than one board which is fine. I don't, I don't really care. I kind of expected that to be the case anyway, because my van, I guess if they had made them three meters long, then I could have put them in the back of my van easily and taken them back like that, but not, not super realistic expectation. So joints, they're just, they're just good. They're just going to happen guys. You just got to get used to them. It, it doesn't even look bad. It's fine. Yeah. So we started in the middle because the edges were a bit of a question mark. And when I say we, I actually do very much mean we this time because my mom was there for all of this. She was super helpful, super amazing. Couldn't have done this without her. I mean, you could do this on your own, but I really wouldn't recommend it. I've done a lot of this build basically on my own with just consultation from my mom and help here and there for certain hard bits. But this bit, I kind of needed the help for all of it because I, it was hard enough to get the screws in straight, even with her help. I think without it, it just I just would have made a bit of a mess of it. And, it, you know, this is the bit that counts. So we don't want to make a mess of it. So knowing that we needed 16 meant that the middle would be two planks, not one plank, which sort of was helpful because you could kind of line that up with the rear doors and the middle of the frame of the roof light. So we kind of got an idea for where the liner was was going to go. And then just try to do one. I think we did the one on the left first. Arbitrary, of course. And now the first one was really difficult. And again, it was one of those points of doubting the plausibility of doing it at all. My mum found it very hard to hold it in place sort of steadily and not kind of slip about. It, yeah, it was tough. It, it really, it, it was hard on our arms as well. It, it, it pushed us quite hard. But the good news was once we got that done, that was basically the hardest part done with. All of the rest after that were way, way easier because they'll sort of largely hold themselves in place from the tongue slash groove of the last board that you put up or the, you know, the one that you're joining the current one into. So yeah, first one done, and after that, it was it was fairly straightforward, at least in terms of fitting the boards. And yeah, I would just run along and, and drill a hole and then screw a screw, just sort of one at a time, just, just to make sure I don't sort of move the board in relation to the hole that I drilled. And that, that worked fine. It was kind of slow and steady, but it was okay. I think we did a pretty good job, actually, of lining up the first board, because n now that it's basically done, it looks... Good. It doesn't. I, I mean, I know that it wasn't perfect because there was a very, very slight difference in the length of boards needed for running up against the roof light. But it was very subtle. It was maybe about a centimeter across the entire length of it. And yeah, I don't know. It's not noticeable to eye, and that's all I really care about. So yeah, good job. We did a good job. But it's nice. <coughs> 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> a few boards needed cutting out to go around the fan at the back. Now the nice thing about this was the frame covers up the edge to a certain extent. You've got like a decent whack of, of tolerance. So the edge didn't really have to be that nice, it didn't really have to be that precise. Um, so I just sort of cut a notch out of it. Cut a, a chunk, shall we say. 
because I don't really know if notch is the right word. I don't know if I'm using these technical words correctly. Is a notch even a technical word? I don't know. I don't even care. So uh, yeah, it was it was actually pretty straightforward with the jigsaw. Uh, I wasn't exactly I wasn't sure at first how I was going to get the blade into the point to do the the right angle, but turns out you just cut your first line, measure and cut as you would, you know, draw on, draw on the plank on the ceiling and then get the measurements and do whatever you need to do. Draw the line, draw the other line, cut the first notch and then just cut the other one straight next to it and then cut another one. And I mean, you probably could do that in a different form, but I just sort of used the the blade width, the jigsaw and just, just did a few, you do like three and then you've got room for your jigsaw and you just cut along and it's pretty straightforward. I found that when I was doing cuts, sort of along the length of something, the easiest way was to kind of uh, push, r rather than sort of go to the end and then go along, because that would really wobble about and go crazy. I would keep it quite close to the to the workbench and actually just feed with my left hand. So keep the jigsaw pretty much still, apply some pressure, but kind of be just moving the board into the jigsaw rather than the other way around. And that worked pretty well, worked pretty well for this too. So that's basically what I did. Getting around the fan was pretty easy because of that tolerance, it didn't really matter that much what the measurements were. It just had to be within a fairly big margin. Uh, the harder bit at that stage was actually doing the holes for the lights. Now, purely coincidentally, I happened to have a hole saw for the right size for the cutout required for the lights that I bought. When I realized this, that confirmed that I was just going to buy more of them because, you know, that's just that's just too good an opportunity to make, miss. I, I don't know if the lights are going to be, they're, they're quite small, so I don't know if they're going to be enough, enough power. But I'm also planning to have strip LEDs running all the way around the edge, which I'm still figuring out the technicals of and what I'm going to get because some of them, there's a huge range in price and, and effectiveness and options and all that kind of jazz. So I still need to figure those out. Yeah, I'm hoping that, that I've got like eight of them, I think. So I'm, I'm thinking that's, that should be enough light. If not, well, then I cry. It's kind of kind of stressful doing this bit. It was all right, though. Uh, just kind of like figure out the points for the holes and, you know, try and get them symmetrical with the one on the other side because I've done symmetrical lighting, which kind of makes sense. The hardest thing was just dealing with the cable because I didn't really give myself enough cable to ensure that it was out of the way and also possible to grab at the same time as cutting the hole. I mean, in for the most part, it wasn't a huge deal. Like if you have to push it out some of the way and you lose it, all you have to do is take the board off again and you'll find it. And then you've got a hole that you can push it through once you've drilled the hole, obviously. And then cutting the hole, the, the sort of, the only bit of technique there was trying to apply enough pressure that it actually worked and sawed through. But, also not so much that you accidentally sort of punch right through to the other side of the insulation because the drill bit, the sort of hole saw adapter has quite a long drill bit at the end, or at least my one does. So that meant that you were you were quite a big risk of just going straight through insulation board and potentially hitting the, the roof of the van if if you were really overzealous. Thankfully I didn't do that. I just just went through some some insulation board, which is not a big deal. I kind of, I, I managed to get it fairly sorted by the end. I like, because there was an excess hole that didn't really have any use, I sort of just stuffed a few little off cutty bits, tiny little bits of board in there. Not amazing, but you know, it's something. Um, and that was, that was re relatively okay. The hardest one, maybe the hardest one, I don't know. They all work a bit tricky in their own way, but the ones towards the front around the fan, I decided there wasn't enough room to do them on the board closest to the middle where I wanted it because that's going to be the light over where my desk is. I, I wanted them to be kind of as close as possible because I want the light to be, the light will be kind of over my desk um, left and right. And I didn't want it to be too far off the side, otherwise it's not really in the right spot. But I didn't want to push it all the way onto the next board. So I did it in the middle of two boards, which was a little bit scarier. Um, to do that, I brought them down off the ceiling after having marked the spot and put them on my workbench, sort of got them gripped up. Not too tightly though, because they sort of bend upwards uh, due to the tongue and groove if you kind of grip them too tightly. So grip them just the right amount in the workbench then drilled the whole saw through. And it was actually fine, worked, worked really well. And because of where I had my screw holes, generated a nice shocked face. Oh, it's a silly face. Ha <laughs> ha, he's surprised. <laughs> so, 
it's always, it's always good when you get a little meme out of something just just randomly just those wholesome day-to-day -day memes I, I do love them and then we just fixed it all back up got got the got the wiring through the hole no problemo i actually ended up crimping some connectors onto these front ones at the point of doing it at this point which is before you normally would i think but it was purely because I wanted to make sure that I actually had enough room for the wires to kind of sit behind the lights with the connectors attached because I hadn't quite made enough channel. I hadn't really thought about the fact that there was quite a lot of wire that had to fit there because there's wire going through that's actually going to USB ports that I'm going to have on the left hand side of my desk uh, and a light switch that I'm going to have there. So there's there's extra wire there. I need space and I didn't really make space for it. So I ended up, I had to do a bit more digging out, which wasn't very pleasant. Um, but, you know, I got there eventually. And it, it, it enabled me to crimp on connectors to some of the wires that were looking like the most sketchy in terms of length. And that's good. So they're actually kind of like hooked up and just, just ready to go. I did also find out that I did not have large enough crimp connectors for my fan cable, which is a bit silly. But I upgraded the cable. I didn't remember to buy more connectors. But I have connectors on the way now, so it's all good. I will have them soon. And yeah, the uh, the only other really difficult bit was at the back getting around the roof light because there the frame doesn't cover up any of your edge. The frame has to tuck in by the edge. So I put the frame in place. I had to do a bunch of extra scraping away insulation because it didn't quite fit anymore, um, which was kind of annoying. And I, I feel like maybe I overdid it because I couldn't tell when it was actually done. It's kind of hard to tell when it's actually fixed in place. It doesn't exactly click. It kind of just stays there and is hard to remove. But I don't know. I think I did it OK. I got there and then realized that we'd made our first mistake when I did the first board on the sort of the left hand side, if you're facing towards the rear because we we'd brought the board that joins with it all the way up to the edge of the plywood so there's no room to fix it in place and at the end i just have like a really thin bit of ply that's just kind of there for a bit of extra support it's not really load bearing shall we say so i had to just i had to bin off the one board that i'd already cut out that's just now scrap and i cut down the longer board refixed it in place not a big problem cut a new one for going around that was fine really it was one on the other side that caused a bigger issue because it had a huge, like it was more cut out than not uh, just because of where it happened to, to happen to fit. Uh, thank, thanks Discord there. I'm a gamer. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> what am I even doing? Yeah, so I figured out when I was doing the notching that it's, it, we're gonna accept that that's what it's called that it's easier to do it on a longer piece because then you get consistent grip all across the workbench. If you do it on shorter bits, there's a point where you push it through and then it's suddenly not gripped by both sets of, of little plasticky jaw things and it suddenly just slips and you just have like a little curve that you, you can't really help without a lot of fore planning or forethought or just generally being a, a, a ninja wizard with your cutting skills. So what I used was a a piece that we'd sort of failed the quality assurance check. It was a bit damaged, like a full board that I then used the good end, marked out where everything was going to do, cut the notch first and then cut the piece of board out. And that worked pretty well, except that I did not cut a big enough notch. So then I spent the next half an hour, 45 minutes, uh, just, <laughs> just going back and shaving just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more off it until eventually it pretty much fit nearly perfectly as perfectly as I needed it to be I was just terrified that if I kept going I was just going to go too far and then really hate myself I'd rather it be a little bit imperfect than have to do all that again because <laughs> it was quite hard to measure how big it needed to be and then quite hard to cut how, needed, how big it needed to be and yeah that was maybe not the longest but it was maybe not the hardest but it was the longest bit I think the longest single section yeah after that we just finished up putting the next few boards in um it was all pretty straightforward a few of them were a little bit harder to get as flush as the others i think just because of the natural the curvature in the roof the slight bend but that was about it really i mean we left we left a bit of margin around the edge because we're not a hundred percent sure what's going to happen there with kind of bending the roof around and what other bits of ply struts i'm going to attach and yada yada all that sort of stuff 
but you know it was it was largely pretty pretty straightforward pretty satisfying still took like a day and a half but it looks good and I'm actually really happy with it and it you know it feel it feels very legitimate now somehow I've got these bits of of wire dangling down all, all, all ready to go and, and it, it's like a real a real roof and you know it actually looks quite nice it doesn't look like a total total noob face did it so I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked uh, next up are we talking about the next stage which was kind of waiting for all the things required to fit my solar panels to come which there is some nice bit of noobishness to explain in that whole saga but i'll get to that on the video about the solar panels yeah it's mostly just doing extra framing for the for the walls up top and framing out the bulkhead which is what i actually finished last night so look at me i'm almost caught up with the videos i'm not gonna shoot that video today though i don't think i need to do more work let's make some van oh yeah huh. damn it Ooh. um yeah if you were to like and subscribe, I will give you a piece of my firstborn child. <laughs> Please supply your address for some time in the next five to ten, maybe fifteen years, and um, I'll I'll make sure to get you just a little piece, just like a hair or like a toenail, maybe. I bet you'd like a toenail, wouldn't you? you oh, you filthy bastards! Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Peace, peace out. See you later, tater alligators. Then give me a piece of that pineapple. Pick, 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 pick. I don't know. Just, just come back soon, all right?